Once upon a time, truck driving was a blue collar ticket to the middle class. Wages were high, hours were good, and union protections were strong. But today? Today, trucking is an industry plagued by low wages, long hours, and few protections for the drivers who manage to stick around for more than a few years. Oh, and if you've heard of a driver shortage, well, we'll get there. How it got this way is a long story. I had to interview this trucker turned professor twice to understand it. But that long story hinges on a single moment when one man, who can only be described as a villain from the perspective of modern day truckers, changed everything. The golden age of trucking began here. Before this, trucking was a new-ish industry with very little oversight and a huge supply of people willing to work for rock bottom wages. In short, a recipe for a dangerous and exploitative industry. So in 1935, Congress passed the Motor Carrier Act. This law enacted regulations to make trucking safer and fairer for drivers. For example, to prevent a downward spiral of trucker pay, new trucking companies could not enter the market unless they could prove that the routes they wanted to service weren't already covered by an existing company. Still with me? The trucking industry has rules now, that's the point. In charge of enforcing these rules was this group, the Interstate Commerce Commission, or ICC. More on them later. For truckers, this act kicked off the best half century ever. Some 50% were represented by a union, most notably the powerful Teamsters. Say what you want about the Teamsters, but they get results. According to government data, the average unionized trucker in 1968 worked 40 hours a week for $3.78 an hour. That's $32 in today's money. But the good times didn't last. They came to a screeching halt, right? Here. This is the moment when everything changed. In the decades since, trucking has deteriorated into what it is today. Low wages and harsh schedules make it difficult to attract and retain good drivers, which leads to a lot of turnover. So who was the villain behind this change? Who is responsible for undermining one of the best blue collar jobs of the 20th century? We are chopping down the thicket of unnecessary federal regulations by which government too often interferes in our personal lives and our personal business. President Jimmy Carter took office during the 1970s, an era of high inflation and repeated oil shocks that drove up the price of fuel. So President Carter targeted trucking. The theory was that a more efficient trucking industry would both consume less fuel and lower the cost of transporting consumer goods around the country. Then those cost savings would theoretically ripple outward to the rest of the economy. What Carter came up with was the Motor Carrier Act of 1980. And that's when changes started to happen real fast. So all the rules of this regulation and deregulation are so complicated that I would need to make a 10-part docu-series in order to cover them all thoroughly. As always, if you're curious, peep the description box below. The point is that this act, for the most part, canceled the regulations of this one. And as much as I've painted President Carter as a villain, he had his reasons. By 1980, some of the regulations of the 1935 Act seemed downright absurd. Take this one. Say you're a trucking company in 1970 that has the rights to transport bathtubs between Buffalo and Albany and between Albany and Rochester. No other company can take bathtubs on those routes. Now, say a manufacturer asks you to deliver tubs from Buffalo to Rochester. Well, too bad. You don't have the rights to transport tubs from Buffalo directly to Rochester. This other company does. The best you can do is take the bathtubs from Buffalo all the way to Albany and then back to Rochester. This is the type of regulation that, among others, made a lot of news at the time that the Carter administration was lobbying to deregulate the trucking industry. But here's the thing, even this zany system has a semi-logical backstory. Regulations like this weren't ever meant to be for trucking. Not really. Remember the Interstate Commerce Commission that was put in charge of trucking per the 1935 Motor Carrier Act? Well, the ICC was originally created by an 1887 bill designed to regulate railroads, AKA the most important goods transportation mechanism of the time. So 50 years later, when it came time to regulate trucking, the government basically said, copy paste. 
So these rail age rules from 1887 made their way into the original Trucking Regulation Act in 1935 and eventually became the reason President Carter wanted to get rid of them in the Motor Carrier Act of 1980. Are we all following? But the original Motor Carrier Act of 1935 didn't just contain regulations like this that, you know, don't make a ton of sense for 20th century trucking. They also contained a lot of the protections that made trucking such a great job in the first place. So after 1980, the trucking industry kind of imploded. Thousands of firms went bankrupt as newer companies promising lower prices entered the market. Down went wages and union power, and up went the hours truckers needed to work to make a decent living. Again, the details are endlessly nuanced. Some trucking gigs today, like those for Walmart, are still really great. But a lot of them aren't, and government data are insufficient to see the full picture. The Bureau of Labor Statistics puts the average annual trucker income at $48,000 in 2021, or an hourly rate of $23.23. Remember, that's a lot less than the $32 an hour equivalent that truckers were making in 1968. But Mr. Truck says that this data assumes that truckers are only working 40 hours per week, which is optimistic. The top quartile is working somewhere between 75 and 95 hours a week. The incentive to work crazy hours is baked into how truckers get paid. Here's an example. Say you're a trucker delivering corn syrup to a candy factory. The factory says that they'll be ready for you at 7 a.m., so that's when you show up. Pre-1980, you get paid for the time you spend waiting. Post-1980, you most likely don't. So however long it takes the factory to get it together and unload that corn syrup is wasted time and money for you. This kind of wasted time can amount to up to $300 million in lost wages annually across all truckers. And, worse for you and me, it means a whole lot of sleepy, overworked truckers are peppering the nation's highways. And that's one of the things that was ignored in 1980 when they passed the law. They got what they wanted. They reduced the costs, but they didn't think about the costs in terms of safety and health, which have really gone down the drain. It's also issues like these that fuel the persistent driver shortage, which, by the way, Mr. Truck here says is a myth. There are millions of drivers in the United States who have commercial driver's licenses who don't use them. They get trained, they go to the job, they realize this is crazy and I get paid for what? So this, they, they walk away. Luckily, for as complicated as this whole story is, Mr. Truck here has a pretty simple solution that he explained in a third interview, not with me, but with the Truck Safety Coalition. I want one thing to get remembered pay people for all their time. It's not that hard, it seems to me. So pay people for all their time will get more efficiency, more safety, more health, and close the gap of the, of the mythical truck driver shortage. Basically, we're probably overdue for the Motor Carrier Act 3.0, this time featuring regulations designed specifically for 21st century trucking. Yes, I know. Uh, it's very. I'm very sweaty. It's very hot. Uh, I don't have air conditioning here in Southern California, but I do have a fireplace. So make that make sense. Also, there are some pretty cool like truckers or former truckers who talk about their experiences on YouTube. So go check them out.